suggested I might say a word about why would this congregation be interested in having the Uncommon Good Super Adobe office building here. And uh, what I, my only response to that is that before I ever arrived at this church, this church was interested in issues around being faithful and being sustainable. And there is a sustainability and faith committee here. Um, already there is a, an interest in these kinds of, of concerns and issues uh, in the world here. Uh, when you're looking at the Adobe, right behind you is our community garden, which was put in a few years ago. And church members, as well as community members, have plots that they cultivate there. And we're working on a plan to do something with that big front lawn so it's not a, a drain on, on water. Uh, we have some church members who were on the board for Uncommon Good who came to me and said they need a place for uh, the ground for building this super adobe. And I thought, well, I can't think of more compatible uh, ministry mission direction than Uncommon Good and, and this church. And, and it really, the whole congregation was just amenable from the get-go, and there really wasn't a whole lot of discussion to let's just get on with it. So it's really our joy and, and our to watch this arise, and we're so excited to see uh, how, when working together in, in collaboration, uh, the community as well as the environment and the world um, can indeed uh, be affected in a positive way. So I'm grateful for the work that Nancy Minty does and that Uncommon Good does and for a congregation that's willing to get out there and take some risks and say, yes, let's do it, let's go. So we all, we all share that spirit. And it took more than the two of us for this to happen. It also took some collaboration with the Claremont School of Theology next door. And so on that note, I will invite and introduce to you the, the Reverend Dr. Jerry Campbell, who is the president at the Claremont School of Theology. Welcome, Jerry. When, uh, when, when we were approached uh, to see if we would be uh, amenable to having, uh, to sharing a, a small part of this uh, project, and uh, that part is actually the necessity of having a the necessity of having a a pond, uh, a drainage pond, which would be on the uh, partially on the Claremont uh, campus. Uh, we were uh, excited about it because. Uh, I suspect you know that since, um, I think it's 1972, the first book um, that provided theological reasons for uh, working more peacefully and harmoniously with the environment was by one of our faculty members, John Cobb. Uh, and that was quite a while ago. Uh, I think, in fact, um, if, if we had listened to uh, what uh, John was recommending in those days we would not have brought ourselves to the current, uh, what I, I guess I'm, I'm with uh, Bill McKibben, we have, we have achieved a certain state of deg degradation uh, in our uh, environment. Uh, and it's, uh, it is not clear uh, exactly whether that can be rescued. Um, our position at the School of Theology is, is a simple position, and that is that it's uh, it's not, it's not enough to think about what others should do about, uh, or what we as a country should do about our environment, or what we as a world should do about our environment. The way to approach it is for us to start as individuals. Uh, and uh, each of us can do something. And so it was, it was, it was an, easy, uh, an easy decision by the School of Theology to think this is something that we can do. Just a little bit, just this, just this drainage pond on the, on the upper end of our campus. But if we all do a little, uh, we can at least slow the rate of degradation. And perhaps, uh, if there's going to be a, a way of rescue, uh, it's going to take each of us doing something. So we were pleased to be uh, asked uh, to participate in this project. And uh, we're, we're excited to see it uh, coming up. We have a long and uh, uh, altogether a mutually beneficial association with Claremont United States. Uh, we want that to continue along in the future, and now we're glad to see Uncommon Good coming along to the 
campus complex uh, to work among us. And so we're, we're uh, happy not only with the building project, but with the, uh, with the a really good step for educating our students and raising consciousness about what we all need to do to begin to address the problem of sustainability. Thank you very much, and it's with great, great pride that we participate from the School of Theology in this project. the director of Uncommon Good. Uh, we're a charity that uh, serves the disadvantaged with uh, education and health and jobs and the farm program. And uh, you know, over the past decade, while well, we've had our little noses to the grindstone, uh, climate change has gone from an abstract uh, concept to a, an unmistakable reality that's unfolding before our eyes if we have you know, eyes to see it. And we've realized that, you know, we can work as hard as we want to end poverty, but it will all be for naught if we don't have a planet uh, that uh, can sustain life and health, you know, for the poor and for, for us all. I think um, Gandhi best captured that relationship between uh, caring for the earth and caring for each other when he said, uh, you know, let us live simply so that others may simply live. And here at Uncommon Good, we're trying to put that philosophy into action. Uh, we've been working uh, for the past 11 years out of the old convent at Our Lady of the Assumption Church, and we've been very, very grateful for that. Uh, but a while ago, we outgrew the space and needed to move, and uh, one of the students in our Team Green program said, you know, I heard about this architect that builds beautiful buildings just using the earth under your feet, and you don't have to cut down a lot of trees, you don't have to, you know, make a lot of steel, you don't have to hurt the planet, you can build in a way that, you know, really is... is uh, harmonious with the planet. And, and it turns out that she was talking about the, the famous uh, environmental architect, uh, Nader Khalili. And he's the person who invented the super adobe building technique in which 90% of the building materials is simply on-site earth. And with little more than earth alone, he creates beautiful, beautiful zero-carbon footprint structures. He was also a, a very spiritual man and a noted uh, translator of the poetry of Rumi. And one of his favorite quotes was, um, Earth turns to gold in the hands of the wise. And I always thought that was a beautiful description of what he himself was doing, you know, with, with the Earth. And uh, so we decided uh, to build uh, what we believe is the first public super adobe building in the United States, perhaps even in the world. And it's the, it went from an idea to a reality when we found our home here with the Claremont United Methodist Church and the Claremont School of Theology. And now when I see this building, you know, rising up out of the earth, I myself, I'm filled with hope. And I, I look at the beauty and the utility that we can create simply working together with the most humble of materials, the humble soil. And I feel that our building will model a way of living and working that will really save the world. And we'll be saving the world because we'll be living and working within the limits of our natural environment, which in a nutshell is what we need to do um, to save the planet. And, uh, you know, it may sound kind of grandiose talking about saving the planet, but I don't think it is. I think that's the task that we're called to do in our time, that we're the first generation that's ever been tasked with saving the whole world. And uh, in that sense, perhaps you and I are the most important people who've ever lived. And uh, it's certainly a daunting task, but also a magnificent one. And I think if we accept it, we will have fascinating and meaningful lives as we do something that's greater than anything that's ever been done before um, by human beings. And uh, it won't be easy, but it will be wonderful. Uh, there's another eloquent Rumi quote, which he says, seek not water, seek thirst. Thirst for justice, thirst to save the world, thirst for our beautiful Mother Earth. She dances around the sun. I would like now to honor and acknowledge the people, our construction crew, who are doing this wonderful thing for Mother Earth and for us all by building this building. Could I have our crew come forward? And I'm sorry to interrupt your lunch, which finally arrived, but, but I do want people to, to meet you.